Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Starfinder Beginner Box panel here at Gen Con. Uh, we are here to discuss with you the beautiful Starfinder Beginner Box that you see right up here on the podium. Uh, it is available in our booth. I will go ahead and start out by saying that. And we do have a few left for the rest of the day. So if you like what you hear here, you can go down there and pick up a copy. I'm going to start out by introducing ourselves. Or your friendly lit local game store. Yes. Or online. Or at Paizo.com, yeah. mm -hmm. indeed. Uh, so I'm Amanda Hammond. I am the managing developer for Starfinder. To my left. I'm Joe Bassini. I'm a Starfinder lead designer. And for the beginner box, I was a design lead with Owen Casey Stevens. Yes. And I'm Rob McCurry, the creative director for Starfinder. Awesome. So we thought that we would start out today by doing a little bit of an unboxing. And it's uh, a little bit in the sense that this is a beginner box I've been using for demos at various conventions throughout the year. So it's actually already been opened and used. But um, Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about what comes in the beginner box? I'll talk about the first thing you see, which is this sweet component sheet on one side. And on the other side, it says, stop, read this. And you do that. And it tells you that there's a lot of stuff in here, uh, depending on what you're looking for. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, how many people here uh, have never played a role-playing game before? <laughs> Great. But this is for you. So you, <laughs> you would learn if you bought this by yourself and didn't really know who you were going to drag into playing role-playing games with you or checking them out. There's a solo adventure here. So if you're by yourself, go, go to this page of uh, the Heroes Handbook, which is in here, 96-page book in here. And start blocking this stuff out here. Yeah, um, sounds good. Uh, and if you're... If you're with some people that maybe have played a role-playing game before, who, who's played a role-playing game but not Starfinder? Okay, great. Awesome. This is perfect. This is a perfect craft for this. So, this is also for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this side tells you, okay, well, uh, do you want to use pre-generated characters and just jump right into an adventure? Uh, you know, you're all sitting around the box and like, let's play this game now. You can do that. Um, if you have a little more experience or somebody's already kind of read, dove into this by themselves, tore it open, and, and then brings it to a game night and knows a little bit about what's going on, you can make your own characters, uh, again, using the Hero's Handbook uh, to make a lot of different characters are possible yeah. in, this, in this book, in this box. Uh, and then there's a little advice for letting people know that in a role-playing game, there is one player that kind of facilitates the experience for everyone called the Game Master, uh, and it tells them to grab the Game Master's book, Game Master's Guide, uh, and this also walks uh, a brand new Game Master through uh, starting to run an adventure and starting to learn the rules of the game. Uh, so that is the very first thing you see, and hopefully you follow the advice and read it. But even if you don't, uh, a lot of this stuff is designed to just be very obvious about how it works. Um, can I backtrack a little bit? Please. And just say, so this is, is this kind of your all-in-one thing. The box contains everything you need except for maybe pencils to just get started playing right away as we have on the components list there. And, and as Joe is saying, it's both good for introducing people to uh, Starfinder if they just want to get a taste of what it's like, um, but also, as, as he said, we kind of set it up to even introduce brand new players to RPGs that have never played before and, and sort of teach the basic concepts of both Starfinder and RPGs in general and get them comfortable with some of the terminology and the way things work. Yeah, and that, we mentioned it briefly, but there's a solo adventure if you're by yourself, uh, which is a little bit like a series of books from my childhood where you <laughs> picked your own, yeah, it took your own tragic death. Yes. They're not as gory in this. I don't know if you've read one of those lately, but. You can't uh, die in that though. Yeah, but there's this little adventure here uh, where you, uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> it's called but you Scoundrels make, and the Spike, and yes. there are Scoundrels and there's a Spike. <laughs> yes. You make you make simple choices and learn how to do the very basics of role-playing games, which is roll roll a 20-sided die, add a number, see what happens, uh, and make choices and explore. Uh, so yeah. Whew. All right, I've talked a lot. Do you want to talk about what else is in here? Uh, sure, we can talk a little bit about some of the additional things. Did you talk about the pre-generated character sheets at all? Yeah, so that's one of the things we have here. Whew are six pre-generated characters. Uh, so you can, you want to talk about these a little bit? Sure. Let's pass these to Rob. There you go, Rob. So we have six uh, characters here. They have really easy little bullet points on the front to like choose this if you'd like to, just to help people that even don't know anything about the game, uh, what they want to do. I particularly like our mechanic. This is Quig the Yosoki, and it says, choose the mechanic if you'd like to hide objects in your cheek pouches. That's one of the things, because that's what Yosoki can do. Um, they've got a brief little, a uh, story about the character on the back and when you open it up it's got everything you need to play the character and everything on the character sheet is explained in the margin so again it's designed so that people can just pick these up out of the box look over it and start playing within just a few minutes 
and doing everything. So we have, uh, these are, the, the Starfinder core rulebook has seven classes, this is six. Um, but they, these, are, these are all the, the same characters that are on there. So we have the mechanic that is good at fixing things and computers and stuff. Uh, the mystic is uh, cast spells. They have a connection to some larger, larger uh, consciousness or, not, or some, something in the, in the greater Hans cosmos or, that's, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's giving them their powers. Uh, the envoy is sort of your diplomat or could possibly be a scoundrel. They're really good at, at people and helping their allies. Um, bluffing their way through tough situations. Yes. Getting away from space pirates. The operative is our big, is our sneaky character class that can break into places and is super stealthy. Soldier, the, the fights things and hits <laughs> things because it's a soldier. And the technomancer who blends magic and technology together. So in this cool sort of science fantasy. So we also didn't say that Starfinder is a science fantasy game if you're new to Starfinder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we blend science fiction and fantasy together. So the technomancer is a really good example of that. But everybody has a lot of both science fiction flavor and fantasy flavor built in. Yeah, and another kind of core concept of this, uh, we have a 500 page core rule book that has all sorts of cool stuff in it, uh, setting information, uh, you know, stuff even about Pathfinder, if you've heard about that, a, a high fantasy role playing game uh, that this is kind of derived from in some ways, but also in the future of that setting. Uh, and so we took this really thick core rule book and kind of distilled it down to the basics of what you want to know to play a role playing game, even for the first time. Uh, and then it so the, so the rules are simpler. Uh, for example, in that book, there are 20 different skills your character could have. In the beginner box, you have 10 different skills. We kind of merged some of the similar ones together. Uh, but we did all that in a way that if you play this, you can play up four levels of character level, which is a lot of, <laughs> a lot of gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you decide you want more in the core rulebook, more options, more classes and species and everything. You go there, and you, you are set up to understand uh, uh, your choices, your, your additional choices. You know what an armor class is, which is a number you need to roll to hit someone in combat. In the core rulebook, there's two kinds of armor classes, and it's just, are you hitting them with a, a baton or shooting them with a laser? Yeah. Uh, and so you're, you're ready for that because you've, you've learned the basic concepts in here. Uh, and then, yeah. I was just going to say the same thing again. <laughs> I'll stop that. Maybe, maybe yes. we can move on to the character features. Okay. What Sounds if you good. don't want to use a pre-generated character? Yes, oh, yeah. Joe, tell us what the box offers the folks that Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. So it comes with a blank character sheet, so you can make your own character. Uh, they're double-sided, of course. And uh, it also shows you something that's helpful for beginners, actually, is like, what do the dice look like? All these, I mean, most of us have seen a, a six-sided die before, the cube. But sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between an eight-sided and 12-sided. So we've got a little handy reference sheet there. Uh, and then a bunch of page numbers, too. So you'll write down kind of the basics of your character, but this will help you remember where to look up the details if you need, if you need to. Uh, and actually, something going back to the pregens, because this is on the pregens, people have really liked that it's filled out in like a little handwriting font for you. So like yeah. all the numbers are there for you. All, the, all you really need to do is, is roll. It's a 20-sided die, and then add whatever number you're adding generally. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, and I believe these are available online if you yeah. use up the six that are in here. Uh, and also, a cool new thing in this beginner box are these player aid cards. So there's six of them, enough for everybody. Uh, and on this side, they have the actions you can take in combat and a little bit about how uh, resting works. You know, you, you, we have a system of hit points where if you take damage, eventually you might go to sleep and never wake up, that kind of thing. Um, thing. So, Has anybody here uh, played Starfinder before? The Yeah, so this, we did change a, a few things or streamlined it a mm -hmm. bit. The action economy changed a bit. Mm -hmm. You want to briefly just... Yeah, sure. So again, in the 500-page core rulebook, just to give a, a wealth of options and kind of balance everything and tune it nicely, we have a system of actions. It's not super complicated, although with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, <laughs> having just three actions you take. You know, why am I plugging? <laughs> I'm to put this different game. Anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, so in this, we decided to do a very simple, you have one action on your turn in combat, and you can move if you want before or after that action. And this every action you can take is listed right here, again, with page reference, in case you need to look it up. But the, the actual rules of the game are only like eight pages or something, I think, in these 200 pages of book. Um, so there's just a lot of support stuff and a lot of customization and, and items that you can buy, weapons, armor, 
uh, magic items, all kinds of cool stuff like that. But these these will these will help you have a summary when it's your turn, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do because I can do literally anything. <laughs> this can help you narrow it down a little bit. And then on the back, um, conditions, which are you know you might get frightened, some alien might uh, stagger you, or if you fall unconscious again, hopefully you'll wake back up. But this uh, this on the back, even once you're experienced with the game, uh, it's helpful to just have this reference uh, again, so you don't have to look it up if you don't want to. Yeah, so those are those. All right. Uh, we talked about these. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about a character creation, or I can, or you? Yeah, go ahead. It's, uh, so, you know, if you're using the blank character sheet to make up your own character, uh, again, going back to these sort of basic concepts, in, in the core rule book, a lot of times you'll get a new class ability and you'll have a whole suite of options to choose from, which can be intimidating to a new player. So we tried to boil those down to a binary choice in the beginner box. So it says, like, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And that just guides you to choosing your abilities as you first create your character and you level up. And and then again, when you graduate to the core rule book, you just there's just more options and say there's just more choices. So it's we don't want people to get overwhelmed and trying to provide an easy way to but a way to still customize your character so that it's your character and is different from the pregens or somebody else's. Yeah, one of the most straightforward uh, ones of those is the soldier. Uh, uh, here, when you if you decide to be a soldier, you you will be told where to write numbers down, like in specific sections of the character sheet, just go write this number down. You don't even really need to know what it means yet. Um, and then and then we talk about the choice you have. And so for a soldier, do you want to fight up close and hit things with your giant, where is it? Do we have a picture of the laser dashko? Yes. The dashko? Yeah. Yeah, the plasma dashko. It's a cool. Big three-bladed yeah. axe. It's kind of behind thingy. us as well, yeah. although that's oh, the core hey, yeah, the main game, giant but picture. same <laughs> yeah, weapon. Same character. Same or do you character. want to shoot things from far away with your uh, laser rifle, that kind of thing. Um, so that's a pretty straightforward choice, but there, there are other ones uh, in other classes that, like for example, the envoy, which you're talking about, sort of can be a diplomat or a rogue kind of character, that you can decide, do I want to help my allies or do I want to focus more on hindering enemies and making them feel bad and easier to hit and stuff like that. Yeah. And you're not totally locked into those choices, but it's, again, to help guide you if you're unfamiliar uh, to make a character that you really like. Yeah, so um, a, a few other things that are in the box that make it uh, easy for you to get started right away. We have a flip mat, which those of you who are familiar with Paizo's products will recognize this is a, a very handy GM's tool. And the flip mat has uh, one side that's just grid, so you can uh, use markers to draw maps uh, of your own creation or from other adventures, and there's actually a section in the GM's book that walks you through how to create a homebrew adventure, basically, once you've gotten a handle on how the game works and maybe played the adventure in the book. You showed on the other side, so I could show you what Amanda drew for that yeah. section of the book. The other side is a map that is actually in the adventure in the Game Master's Guide that uh, is fully playable with a party of all the pregens or um, characters that are custom and that uh, is an adventure by Rob. Yep. So and we get the map and, and complete adventure to use it. So again, just to play right out of the box, you can, the GM can start reading the adventure while the players are looking over their characters. The yes. map's already here for you. Mm -hmm. And then once you finish that... I was going to say, then uh, there's also in the inside cover of the oh. GM's book is a kind of guide, short guide to what's, what the map is on the map and the adventure. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we do give you advice on how to make your own adventures, and we give you lots of stuff to do that with. This is Amanda's very <laughs> nicely drawn sample map, <laughs> just giving you an idea. Of, we wanted to show you what it's really like when you're designing adventures. Yeah. Uh, so this is, where is this? <laughs> uh, that is uh, down on the ghost levels, actually. Okay. That's one of the ghost part, levels. Part of the space mm -hmm. station. Uh, one of the, yeah. Sorry. After, after you've played through the first adventure as a way to teach GMs how to do stuff, we then say, well, here's how you can do a sequel to that. And so Amanda's map is, this is like the next level to go to. We give ideas. We don't have the adventure written out, but we give the GM guidance on how to create that adventure to yeah. play a sequel to the first thing they can draw that map or one of their own on the flip mat and then from there there's just more advice okay now you can kind of go with yeah and we okay. give you a, a whole bunch of aliens to use uh, both friends or foes you know people you might talk to things that might sneak onto your starship and eat you uh, just a whole bunch of mm -hmm. and these are these are again simplified versions of things that exist in the Starfinder core rulebook and alien archive volumes uh, but this is again just one column everything you need to give challenges to your uh, your other players. Yeah. And the, so the adventure that's in there sort of also walks the GM and the players through, so they don't need to know all the rules. It's like, all right, combat happens, and there's a little thing 
page like this is what this is what you do in combat and like oh now you're entering exploration mode this is what that is so it's designed to teach to teach the rules of the game to the gm and the players as they as they go through the adventure mm -hmm. what and do we do with these maps though you put pawns on them and this must be a demo copy because there aren't any in this yep. box yep. <laughs> that is exactly what happened i packed that up and realized that my Pawns and pawn bases from that box were in my jams bag that I had left at the office and I had to go to the airport. So <laughs> there are no pawns in that box, but so they do come in it. Yeah, and there's there's little bases so they can mm -hmm. stand up. Um, there's one for each of the pre-generated characters, so you'll look exactly like you do mm -hmm. on the picture there. But then there's also uh, enough so that no matter what um, species you choose or class, there'll be a pawn that, that matches that. Like yeah. if you are a, a bug person, a uh, spellcaster, you'll find a mini that looks like that. Uh, sorry, uh, a pawn. And uh, so there's 87 of those. And then the, the Game Master has a bunch, like every alien that's in here, there's a pawn for that as well, so that they can, uh, at least one, so that they can set up cool encounters where you can see where everyone is and, and use tactical uh, strategy when you're uh, in combat. If you're not familiar with the Rapons, these are just die-cut cardboard counters. They, like they said, they stand up in bases, full color art, double-sided, so everybody can have a unique pawn. Every monster has a unique pawn, so basically in, instead of miniatures or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's really cool to have a little standee with the actual art of the monster that you're describing as the GM. Um, and it, can, it provides a bit of a visual aid and a little bit more um, imaginativeness to the players as opposed to, you know, just like a quarter or a penny or, or other folks that or other things folks might use mm -hmm. on the map. And then there's an ad sheet, which you all came to hear about, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> but really, it's, it's an invitation to Starfinder Society, which uses the core rulebook rules. Um, and has a little bit more structure too, just so that everyone's on an even playing field. Um, because again, role-playing games, I say again, I didn't say this the first time today, <laughs> but uh, role-playing games are about doing what's fun for you and your group and telling stories together. Yeah. So if you're at home, you should always do whatever, leave whatever rules behind you you don't like and, and invent ones you do like, that's fine. But uh, Starfinder Society is a cool organized system of play where you can go anywhere and just have a character ready for you or bring your own and everyone's kind of agreed to the same baseline rules so that uh, no one person is like doing all the things while everyone just watches them and like well your character is pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so there's an invitation to join that and then on the back again if uh, again, you can play from level one to level four with this uh, with what's in the box here uh, and if you want to go beyond that or you know you played your first encounter you're like oh yeah I want I want to be one of a hundred possible playable species that we have in the in the entire Starfinder line. Uh, this just lets you know kind of some of the other books that are available, like the Core Rulebook. Um, we have a setting book called The Pact Worlds that just expands on all the the uh, solar system that is the basis of our setting, which is also talked about in here uh, a fair amount. Mm -hmm. um, and and an alien archive book, which is just again like a, a larger page count, more rules, more options, including player options for uh, the alien archive that's in here. The the shorter column uh, creatures yeah. in our alien archive volumes, we have like two pages for each creature that gets really into all the cool details about them. Yeah. So yeah. Talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. There's a lot to say about this product. Um, so we spent a lot of time when we were developing this product and going through the rules for it, um, which we have alluded to um, and been specific about. In some cases, they are a pared down version of uh, the Starfinder Core Rulebook, and they're uh, intended to be um, an entry level points um, into just continuing to play the beginner box or uh, to transition into Starfinder Society or the Core Rulebook or home games, things like that. Um, so that was a very uh, kind of long and involved design process as we were essentially building a new game. Uh, not entirely from scratch, but very much with a different um, design uh, imperative and perspective. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about uh, what some of our uh, core sort of goals and bullet points were as we were looking to create a game that was specifically for uh, beginners to Starfinder or maybe even role-playing games in general? Sure. Yeah, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll say I'll say one thing. We, we we've talked about like streamlining the rules because we want it to be approachable. And I think a good example of that in the Starfinder core rule, core rulebook, you might have heard there's starship combat uh, because sort of the default assumption for Starfinder is that the group of adventurers is the crew of a starship. Um, in the core rulebook, there was a whole little <clears throat> tactical game you can do with starships. We didn't want to quite add a, an extra game onto the beginner box, so starships are more of just a story element in the beginner box. It's the thing that takes you from place to place and everything. But you know, again, if you like playing around with starships, then hopefully people will be like, "Well, I want to do more stuff." And so, again, graduating to the core rulebook, then there's this new thing about how you can 
get your own ship and customize it. But here it's just a story element. There's still starships. We've got cool pictures of them and everything, but you don't have to learn a whole bunch of rules to do it. It's just a fun thing. Hey, we're on a starship. Let's fly to a new planet. That kind of thing. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like a, a big example of what we're like a big subsystem that we just didn't put in there. Um, I'll start with that. Do you have something else to follow up? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, again, we, we came from a Pathfinder background and, and just making the Starfinder core rulebook, we had a lot of similar decisions. Like, what do we want to streamline after? What, what have we learned from that uh, game? And, and what do we want to carry forward? And what do we want to try that's new? Um, so something like a tax of opportunity, which is a thing where if you're next to someone and you try to move away from them and they're holding a big... <laughs> laser sword or something, <laughs> yeah. they can swing at you for free and try to hit you. And while it's not necessarily complicated, um, it is yet one more thing you have to learn. Uh, and just that one extra, it's the cognitive load kind of of everything that we tried to just keep as, as clean as possible so that you're not getting distracted by it necessarily. If all you want to do is just tell stories and learn how the, how the basics of a role playing game works. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing that we, I was actually fighting to keep it in for a little bit and then mm -hmm. uh, I listened to <laughs> the other three people on the design <laughs> team who were like, mm. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there were, uh, for those of you, I saw a couple hands who have played uh, the Starfinder Core rulebook before. Um, you will notice that there's not uh, the Kasatha in there or the Solarian, and that was very similar to the reasons that Rob explained about the Starship combat system not being in there, is that the Solarian is a little bit more of a complicated class, uh, it's got a little bit more of a learning curve to it, and the Kasatha also presents some mechanical um, confusion or, or just considerations because it has four arms. Um, so when we were deciding, you know, we only have have 96 pages for each of these books we have to be very uh, strategic in what content we're including because we want to make sure that we're giving folks as much as we can to teach them how to play the game and not overload like Joe mentioned um, increase that cognitive load uh, we made the difficult decision it took a, it took a little while before we finally pulled the trigger but uh, to not include those classes um, for those specific reasons and that really allowed us to focus on uh, that basic um, you know like the action economy being the way it is and with the player aid cards, um, just to focus on l teaching folks the basics before they take the next step uh, into something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, I'm perfectly content for people to just play with the beginner box, and that's plenty for them. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. I've had plenty of Starfinder core rulebook campaigns that didn't get past fourth level, mm -hmm. you know, before we're like, I want to make a new character and go somewhere else and do something <laughs> entirely yeah. different. So, yeah. And there's still plenty of choice and customization mm -hmm. in the characters. Besides your class abilities that we give choices, uh, every character class has has feats. Um, there's equipment, all sorts of different equipment that different characters can buy. If you're a spellcaster, there's spells you get to pick. So, again, trying to keep the choices, really keep down the cognitive load, and and sort of manage those choices, but still provide a lot of a lot of customization. And we have a uh, for people making their own characters, we have a list of suggestions. If they even if, if they're like, oh, there's too many things to do, I don't know what to do. We just have some guidance. Like, okay, well, if you want to do this, think about picking these things. And it just helps guide people if they don't want to read a whole page or two of all the feats. It's like, okay, well, here's a shorter list of feats that I can choose from, and let people kind of get into the, at their own pace, get it, as much complexity as they want. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, is there anything else that you guys would like to to bring up as topics of interest before we go ahead and open to questions? Not yet. I'll say the Game Master's Guide also has just a lot of tips for Game Masters, particularly new Game Masters, um, and what, you know, like how to run a group, how to, how to start working on your own adventures, how to take existing adventures and converting them to your use, yeah. um, and just also some of the more some of the basic rules that they can add in about environments. So, you know, if you want to start talking about how much gravity is on a planet or what the atmosphere is like, those they can add those in there. That's part of the flavor of the game, um, but not strictly necessary, but are there for the for the game masters to add into their games as they want. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So I will also add to what Rob said that the adventure that's in the game master's guide has more explanatory text than would maybe be normal. Um, and that is very much to sort of walk game masters through, okay, this is sort of how this is set up, and um, this is like the, the order of operations for when combat breaks out and that sort of thing, and that's very much intended to just make it as organic as possible so that you can, like Joe said, start reading the adventure while your, your players are looking over their character sheets and, and kind of understand it without having to flip through the book. 
much. The adventure also gives a, a good sense of the types of encounters. We give the GM guidance on that about building encounters as well, but <laughs> the adventure kind of highlights that with, you know, the, you encounter a creature, and in a lot of cases, there's the option if the players want to talk to them or if they want to fight. So, you know, it's not, fighting isn't necessarily the answer to everything. You can mm -hmm. talk to people. Um, there's some traps. There's also just some... <laughs> it's possible, but it see, we possible. like having the options. You know, you can make choices, talk or fight. It's possible that um, some beginners might not know that you can just <laughs> yeah, shoot true. everything with your lasers. Yeah. So, you know, but if, if they want to talk to that, we, 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 we have those options in there. If they want to talk to some of the creatures, you know, they might get some sort of reward for, for helping them. Uh, we've also just got some of the, you know, if you go into a fantasy dungeon and find some weird room, we got some weird stuff in this too mm -hmm. because it's fantasy. So, just kind of showing like the whole breadth of types of encounters that you can that you can play in the game. And we, we put a list of inspirations in here too, didn't we? Oh yeah, good we point. Did, yeah. I forgot about that. The core rule book has a two page spread of just all these like uh, films and television shows and literature and comics and other video RPGs games, and video yeah. games. Yeah, video games. That was a weird emphasis. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we did the same thing here, except just one page, which that was, I think, Owen had to take our two pages and say, like, did, yeah. which yeah, we got some new ones in there That's too. True. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great, Sean. I always like seeing like where summary. game designers get their inspirations from. You're like, you can discover really cool new books or films, and yeah. you know, there's things that, and or, people just want to get a sense of like what kind of stories they can tell. They can read a book or watch a movie, and it's like, oh, I could do that in Starfinder. Yeah, and it, you know, doing that with your friends, like watching one of these movies before you play, can, yeah. can be like, oh yeah, let's let's. Because that's the other thing about Starfinder, including the beginner box, is that you can have many different kinds of adventures. You've, mm -hmm. you've talked about that really well. Handle the other day. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. So Starfinder is um, appropriate for a wide range of science fiction and science fantasy types of adventures, and, and really that is because of, of the setting. The setting is very diverse. This is set in the packed worlds, um, just like the Starfinder Core Rulebook is. I'm not supposed to bang on the table, but I just did. So sorry, James. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, but it is a very diverse setting. Uh, it's very open ended. It's very wide. There's room for uh, cyberpunk type of stories. There's room for high fantasy. Uh, uh, with technology mixed into um, that, we actually have a planet in the, pla in the pack world called Triaxis, which some of you who come from Pathfinder might remember that that was our frozen uh, world with Dragonkin and uh, Rhyphorians. Um, well, they're called Rhyphorians in Starfinder. Mm. And they're bonded, and uh, you know, they're in, in Starfinder, we went from uh, Dragonkin riding Rhyphorians to um, them being pilots. Yes, I'm sorry, in Pathfinder, that's what they were. In <laughs> Rhyphorians ride the Dragonkin. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what you yeah. said. Isn't that what I said? No. It is. Oh, yeah. okay. We'll, we'll rewind the tape after. Yeah, we will. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so in Starfinder we have them as uh, as co-pilots often, so they're still bonded and that lore is still there, but it's been updated for the Starfinder setting. Um, so so the setting is very appropriate for all types of fantasy, from the, you know like the space opera with Star Wars and Star Trek uh, to the gritty um, Total Recall, uh, urban uh, high you know science fiction type of settings to really everywhere in between and lots of unique stuff that really only exists in the Starfinder setting. Um, we've got a planet full of undead uh, creatures, for example, with a wide range of motivations that's actually allied with the with the Pact Worlds, with the, the main sort of uh, good organization in the solar system. And so there's just all kinds of interesting things that really uh, are meant to spark your imagination as a game master and come up with cool ideas. And the adventure here is really only intended to, the, to be the beginning of that. Um, we really want people to read through the setting, get inspired, come up with their own stories, and use these, uh, use these as suggestions really to make your own cool stuff for your parties and for your friends um, to have fun. Yeah, and we, there is setting information, like we said, which you can always repurpose, you know, if you're not into the names that we picked or whatever. Yeah. You can always... Uh, Choose your own. Uh, and another thing we got to do here was, because we have tons of really evocative art for all these different kinds of adventures you can have um, in the Coral Book and all the other books, but we ordered some new art too here that's just in these products, uh, some of which I really like. Yeah, um, yeah, there's yeah. some good stuff in there. Yeah. Cool. Back to the setting for a second. Um, both the solo adventure and the the adventure, the full adventure in here are set on Absalom Station, which is kind of the center of the packed world, which is the center of our setting. So that gets a little bit of detail. That's kind of be a good base of operations. It's very urban, but it's a it's a cool space station. But so you can have just an entire campaign set on that space station. You could go and visit different planets. You could go elsewhere in the galaxy and, and create your own. But we kind of give you like a small place to start if that's where you want to start, and then you can expand. The GM and the players can expand the game as they as yeah. they like. Very much so. Okay, so with that, let's open for questions and see what folks have to ask us. Questions, feel like the microphone. Questions are on broadcast on Twitch. If you feel like
Uh, once I played my character up through the uh, the extent of the beginner box, how hard is it tra to transition that same character to the full or rulebook rule set? That's a great question. Um, I I would want to rebuild the character using, if only because you'll have more options, <laughs> uh, if nothing else. And again, you'll understand those options really well. Um, and it, like Rob was saying, we kind of gave you this this binary choice for each class to keep things simple. Uh, there's many more choices than that in the core rulebook. Uh, for example, the soldier has multiple different fighting styles they can pick, and at a higher level, they can pick a secondary fighting style even. Um, so uh, it's not it's not that difficult, I don't think. But uh, you'll have to find the analogs. Like if you want to keep it pretty much exactly the same, there should be an analog for everything that we kind of simplified. You should find that thing just maybe with a slightly different name, or maybe lets you do more even uh, than you were used to. But yeah. It's mainly a, a thing of expansion. I mean, you would have to yeah. redo the skills, but it's because we combine some of the skills together. Um, so you would definitely want to rebuild that as those get separated out because, you know, we have like in the core rule book, something that might be three skills like piloting, engineering, and computers have all been put into one skill called technology in the beginner box. And so, again, cause that's just why worry about tracking three different things in, in this thing, but you will need to do that. So there would be some conversion, but yeah, I think the most... Most everything, if not everything, has an, has an analog that mm -hmm. would be easy to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great question. So I guess somewhat associated with that question, in transitioning to the, the main set, is there any rule dynamic or anything like that that you'd have to unlearn in order to learn the dynamic in the core books? Unless we messed up real bad, because that was our main focus. The whole yeah. design process was like, how do we set people up for success? How do we give them the one main piece they need so that when they're introduced to like the sort of gradations, like I think I was mentioning armor class before, mm -hmm. that's just one number you have, and it's funny because when we're demoing it, we always <laughs> start to say the core rulebook version of armor class, and then this hits your armor class because yeah. it's just the one. Same thing <laughs> um, with stamina points. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, in, in the core rulebook, there's two pools of hit points because it's hit points and stamina points, and you recover them slightly differently. Uh, in the beginner box, you just have hit points, but you still have what are called resolve points, which help you heal yourself and get back into a fight. And that stuff is also in the beginner box, um, so it'll it'll all be very familiar. You'll know you'll know the basics that you need, uh, and then you'll like, it's really adding more options again. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the two the two biggest things. It's not about unlearning, but just sort of relearning. It would be the action economy because in the beginner box you move and take an action. In the core rule book, there are move actions, one of which is a move, but there's a few other actions. So it, you, you have to kind of shift that and maybe a little bit with the skills too just because there's more skills so instead of using one thing like like i said earlier for three different tasks you would have three different skills but and, and even with that i would say you know we we looked at in the core book there's the standard actions um which are kind of the most uh, the standard yeah <laughs> there's that uh impactful i guess and then a move action and then a swift action like there's this kind of gradation uh, but even in, when you're playing tactical combat in the core rulebook, you often are moving and taking an action. Yeah. So that is, should still be familiar. Uh, we just, again, simplified the terminology, uh, mushed some choices together into things that made sense. And uh, it should, yeah, it should track pretty well. Yeah. Hello. Hi there. This is a real basic question, pretty much about saving money. Um, yeah, yeah. So if your group was starting out and uh, you, you're pretty sure you're going to eventually transition to, uh, Pat, to Starfinder Core, mm -hmm. if all your players were experienced D20 RPGers but new to Starfinder, maybe played Pathfinder, new to Starfinder, uh, would it be appropriate to just buy one beginner's box and they and that the GM would read and that the other players could like literally just show up and play? Absolutely, yeah. I mean that that's a group that's set up to just play right out of the box. We were talking about the sheet that says like, where are you at? Like, what do you want to do today? Uh, that sounds like a group that could either just take the pregens and start playing or or start with character creation. Even you know, just spend probably about an hour together creating a party together and yeah. saying like, oh, you be the android and I'll be the, yeah. the rat person with the cheeks. <laughs> the rat person um, with the cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and definitely, I mean, one per group is, is more than sufficient. Yeah, we, we put enough player aid cards and pre-gens and character sheets in there for everybody. One set of dice, but if you have well, that's former, if they're already played RPGs, probably everybody's got their dice already. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course, oh, of good, course. Good, 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 good. Hi, we sat through your AP discussion as well. We came to Starfinder, at least, you know, 
conceptually to fill in some gaps as some other sci-fi uh, games were playing and to maybe launch a new one, we had not thought that it would involve magic. So I see that there's a racial continuity between Pathfinder and Starfinder. There's magic continuity. You also have the Pac-10 worlds. How, if we were to, say, adapt your rule set for something like uh, we wanted to make a a game that had a feel of like Stargate, that, that TV series, or if we wanted to add the ship combat rules onto our Star Wars rule, saga rules that we're not happy with those space combat rules. I'm starting to get the feel that eventually we're not really going to be playing Starfinder. If the pack worlds are gone, if the magic is gone, if the racial continuity is gone, it seems like uh, we're, we've gutted the system so much that we won't be able to talk to other people who play Starfinder and have any common basis of experience. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? That's a very interesting question is, I mean, you know, it's, I think that people should like take what they want from games for their home game to make the game that, that they want. And if there's a, a system or a subsystem in, a, in another game that really fits, I think that's, that's perfectly fine and everything. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say we try to present stuff that, you know, that has a setting and a full rule set and everything. But of course, not everyone plays in our setting that just lets us write books to set in that setting. Um, I mean, I guess it, it could be if you're just taking bits and pieces and the core system isn't isn't the same. Um, but you know, it's it, some part of Starfinder is still part of Starfinder. Like that's that's how I view it. Um, it's like the ship of Theseus kind of question. Like, yeah, if yeah. you just take a board off and then yeah. move it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we're good either way. I mean, you know, yeah, to there's take, no wrong I'm, way to yeah. play. Yeah. I mean, we have we, we do in Starfinder. We do leave it kind of open about like where your abilities come from. It's not hard coded necessarily. So it's you know if maybe if your character like studied at some alien monastery or uh, somebody else got an implant or something, and that's how they got these abilities. So there's not like that allows some flexibility. Although I think it would be hard to strip a lot of the magic out because that is kind of part of the of the game is this blend of magic and technology of fantasy and science fiction and then we um, have books i'm sorry yeah no uh, like the pact worlds setting book that uh even if it's not you're not in the pact worlds not using those specific things there are tons like the point of those books for us is to give ideas for adventure hooks and storylines and just spark other people's imagination and our own like that's when we write our own adventure paths we look like what do we have in the setting that we haven't looked even more closely at yeah. and it's fun for us to do that and we think it's fun for other people to do that too yeah. and we don't really care what you call it <laughs> at home you know you don't need to call it Absalom Station you can call it something that you like I know sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh no I'll call it that Poor forever Rob. don't worry make Rob cry. Uh, so we have a question from Twitch chat from the Real Potus ninety eight. Would Paizo ever consider selling the beginner box play or handbook separately? Um, the person asking the question would want to use them to um, give to people at the beginning of sessions oh. to get them more acclimated with uh, simpler, more um, oh, basic versions of those rules. I see. Yeah. So in general, um, from a product standpoint, we don't do that, and we haven't done that for the Pathfinder book either. But uh, the PDF of that, I think, might be a good solution. Um, I think if you buy the beginner box, you get the PDFs of the books. That seems to be. I think that's correct. I think. I don't know why you're both looking at me. <laughs> yeah, I know, because I assume you probably knew. But, um, but I, I do believe that that's the case. And so distributing that PDF to the players is definitely a good idea. Because that, that was something that we thought of as well. And actually, that was part of the discussion that then resulted in these player aid cards because we knew that it was somewhat prohibitive to have only one hero's handbook to kind of pass around as people are looking up rules. And um, we really wanted to put the most important stuff on here. So this is meant to help with that. Um, there's a PDF uh, that should be available. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. Um, the internet will correct me if I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pregens again have yeah. uh, explanations yes. of what, not just like what's on the character sheet, but the top left is like, what do you do in this game? <laughs> you, yeah. you roll a 20 sided die and add a number usually. Yeah, it, uh, it is much more um, explan explanatory and instructive than mm -hmm. a, like a character sheet in the yeah. core rulebook version would be. So, hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Has there been a thought to expanding the contents like was done with the first edition Pathfinder Beginner's Box where there's all kinds of extra options that are added onto it? Like Pathfinder Academy and, and all of that no, stuff. Not the, no, not the Academy. Well, I guess it, the, the Academy came from the Beginner's Box. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's like additional modules and adventures yeah. that were added on. There's to a new expand. class, the Barbarian was added. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, stuff like that. We can answer that. Yes, there has been thought. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we, we have talked about it extensively. We don't have any yeah. plans right now yeah. to do that, but it, you know, it depends on the community and if you know if, if, if we get a lot of a lot of people playing it and then, and it's big. That is certainly something that we would look at at, at doing. Right now, it's just the beginner box is self-contained for the most part. And, yeah. Um, do you think there's any of the um, 
beginner box rules that would translate well to core rulebook Starfinder, uh, maybe for players who like some of the options but have some difficulty understanding some of the um, action economy issues. Is there any like rules that might translate over? Uh, again, I hopefully all of them. <laughs> um, you know, skill checks work the same way in both systems. You just have more skills to choose from, basically, in the uh, in the core rule book. I think you could probably bring in the beginner box skills. You could theoretically, you'd have to, you know, convert things on the fly um, or or ahead of time. But I think you could simplify the skills in there to to some extent. I mean, it depends on depends on exactly what you're doing. But I think you could you could do that. Um, Combat would be a little harder just because monsters use have a lot more different types of actions they might use. But. Yeah, Speaking of monsters, good. though, we also, uh, something we did in here that's, that is new to the sort of beginner box format, it wasn't done in the Pathfinder one uh, yeah, those years ago, is uh, just a simple system for creating your own uh, aliens. So there's 40 some in here, but if you wanted to make your own, you we give you advice and like numbers on that so that you can make monsters and not worry about unfairly murdering your your mm -hmm. fellow players <laughs> and that would be something not, like if, if sorry not unfairly that's all yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to take like a, a published adventure like an adventure path or a starfinder society scenario um and those monsters don't appear in the game master's guide you could rebuild them you know using these rules in the game master guide and that way you could have the beginner box version of those monsters to run some of those adventures in the beginner box that's a, a way to convert in the other way toward the beginner box and, and we're talking about like a half page of, of how to do that it's not a really no but, like, process. but if yeah. you have a monster to model yeah. you no, can use saying, that yeah. to rebuild yeah yeah it's easy <laughs> so something you just said twigged another question um you you talked about the hundred races that are in the core book um, and, and the core line, I should say, like yeah, across core all line. the books. Okay. And yeah. Alien yeah. Archive has a whole mm -hmm. bunch of, yeah. of them. Playable. Yes, yes. yes. yep, yep. Okay. Alien Archive um, is one, two, and then three next month. Three this month. What's the Technically, month? No month. sales promo at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. How many races are included in the beginner box? Okay. And then are there any skills or equipment that is not available to all character classes? Sure. There, so there's six uh, species you can play as, and six classes, and there's also themes, which are kind of like your background as a character, so mm -hmm. I'm just tacking that onto your question, uh, just because it's that those are kind of the core yeah. uh, it's important for character customization. Creation. Yeah, yeah. Race, theme, and class are the... Yeah. So what whatever six times 36 is, that's how many like basic options you have, but that doesn't count the sort of multiple paths in the uh, classes that we talked about, so maybe times two there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And the, the core rulebook has seven races and seven classes. We just removed one from the beginner box. And then the mm -hmm. alien archives, um, which you know are presented as usually adversaries, a, a lot of those have separate rules um, for the for the Starfinder RPG. Um, that's like if you want to also play this as a player character, yeah. here's the rules to do yeah. that. But they're they're not they're not in the core rulebook. They're in the they're in the monster yeah. books. But they kind of we want to give that that sort of cantina feel you know of like you walk into a place and there's every seat in the bar is a different type of alien and and then to the second part of your question about uh specific equipment um so for example the soldier is proficient with uh different uh armor and weapons like heavier armor you know they're better at being a soldier using heavier stuff uh and actually in the beginner box we simplified that in some cases uh, i believe for the armor i think in the core rule book uh you can use armor, but it's just not great if you're not proficient with it. But in the beginner box, we just said, no, you can't. You just can't use it. Mm -hmm. um, just to, again, keep things much simpler. Um, other than that, though, all the weapons, the uh, armor, like the light armor, the magic items, the technological items, all that stuff uh, anyone can use. Okay. Yeah. Now, in, in Starfinder overall, uh, equipment is leveled. That's one way that it's that it's uh, re restricted to certain characters. It's not certain characters, it's characters of a certain level. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're, if you're second level, you can't buy a 10th level item or something. Um, we took out the levels in the beginner box because it's all in one sort of grouping of levels. Um, so we didn't, we didn't do that, everything in the beginner box. But again, that's something then when you graduate to the Starfinder Core Rulebook, it's like, okay, well, these are all the sort of low level weapons. And as you go up in level, you'll be able to buy Newer weapons and better weapons and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And that said, in here too, uh, we use kind of uh, the price of items as kind of a limiter. So there is still a scaling. You still get to level up your character and get more powerful in the beginner box itself because you get access to more stuff as you as you play more. Yeah. Any other questions today from folks? 
Any parting yeah. words that we'd like to offer? <laughs> we get our bucks? We got like five minutes. We've got to say something else yeah. about the... Uh, yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, no, I, I can't think of I can't think of anything else. Yeah. So it's just got lots of cool stuff. Uh, before this came out, I remember talking uh, on our stream that we had uh, Starfinder Wednesday stream, talking about it, going through it, unboxing it, and I was talking about being excited to play with my niece mm. and her family, and I got to do that actually, just like last month. Uh, and it was everything I dreamed. They were like, "This is weird," but oh, yeah. okay. And my niece was like, "I want to, I want to, I want to be the game." Like, had just learned what a game master was and yeah. said, "I want to be the game master." And these and you know, my family does not play any role-playing games. Mm -hmm. um, they've played a few board games, like Ticket to Ride, that kind of thing, that yeah. I brought them and made them play with me. Uh, but uh, even they were saying, you know, like, when they saw the blank character sheets, they're like, oh, I can make my own. Like, yeah. uh, and, but they used the pregens and kind of looked at the back and read the little backstory. And, and some of them kept that backstory, and some of them ignored it completely <laughs> and decided to be uh, murder hobos, for lack of a yeah. <laughs> but Space that's, murder hobos. Yes, exactly. That's right. But, you know, not Space all of them made that choice, and that was good, so... And, and yeah, it was just fun to see that. I'm kind of answering a question no one asked, which is like, why would someone who is into Starfinder get this or use it at all? And mm -hmm. for me, it was really like to to share the hobby with other people who, yeah. who wouldn't have thought of it maybe, but um, an accessible way to like check it out. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the, the most fun things for me as I'm demoing the, the beginner box set is I have been for several months at this point, uh, most of the year, is just watching people who uh, have not really played a role-playing game, or maybe they've played one role-playing game, but it's not anything like Starfinder, really just kind of sit down and come up with the things that their characters are doing, very much from their imagination, uh, very much from a story perspective, very much ooh, from role-playing, Sorry about that. Um, and really just kind of watch the game come to life with these new ideas that you might not necessarily see from somebody who's very used to kind of rolling a d20 and just attacking and attacking and attacking. And the game, I think, really sparks that imagination with the way that the adventure is written, with you know the, the way the map is very dynamic, um, the way the different story elements interact, uh, and all the possibilities for all the homebrew stuff that we have. Um, you know, suggestions in the core or in the Heroes Handbook and Game Guide for example, I really think that that's the most fun thing for me is to, to watch them do that. And similar to what Joe said, I haven't had the opportunity to do this yet, but before the um, beginner box came out, I was talking with my aunt, uh, who's in her 60s and loves Star Trek, absolutely loves Star Trek. She can summarize almost any episode from almost any of the series. Um, and every time we sit down to watch it, she is just like, oh, I remember when this and this and this happens. And just she just has this incredible mind for science fiction stories. I was telling her about Starfinder, and she's never played a role-playing game before, didn't, doesn't even really know what they are. Uh, and she wants to play Obozaya because she said she wants to be a giant lizard lady with a big fire axe. So I'm really looking forward to running this for my aunt and some other family members and seeing exactly how that goes. Hmm. Should we close out with one final yeah, question? Yeah, we'll do one final question and then we will let you guys go. Okay, you, make, you're, uh, you mentioned the recommended reading and uh, materials list. Is there any Starfinder specific fiction that I can point someone to to say, okay, you want to understand the setting, here's like a short story from yeah. Absalom Station. What's my comics though? Uh, well, we, we are going to be debuting short fiction on the Paizo, on the blog at paizo.com in the next coming weeks. We're going to start, we already, we've written the sort of uh, stories of our iconic characters, sort of their backgrounds and everything. Those are on our blog already. You can search Meet the Iconics, but we're going to be doing some other short fiction uh, with them in the next coming weeks. And so that's all we have right now. We'd like to get into more fiction, but... Take a look at the Paizo, the blog on Paizo.com, and we'll see. And, and that will these people can read that and get a sense of. And there's cool art that go along with it that they can look at at the same time. Like movie? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Hopefully We'd love that. Do you know someone? Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, our friends at Dragons and Things uh, made a pretty cool video that goes through the beginner box. Uh, so you just search YouTube for Starfinder beginner yeah. box, and you'll find a fun little story of a, a, a starship captain who's, it, it's specifically character creation, just shows you kind of all the options you get. Yeah. Uh, so it's the starship captain whose ship is breaking down and is, you know, yeah. AI who's real snarky because yeah. AI in science fiction is always really snarky, yep. is yeah. help, helping him, walking him through building a character to come and repair the starship for them. Yeah. So that's a really cool video. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, thank you all so much for coming to the seminar. And uh, like I said, we have we should still have a few of these uh, left down in the booth. And uh, feel free to come find us uh, throughout the rest of the show, such as it is. <laughs> Ask us whatever your questions you might have. And so thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.